have a 55 year old female presenting with history of difficulty in passing urine and she seems to be straining for the past few weeks uh, while passing urine otherwise no other symptoms how are you going to evaluate so i will review this patient in my dedicated uh, female urology clinic i will assess uh, the history regarding the onset and progression of difficulty in uh, passing uh, urine i will ask about associated um, uh, any storage urinary symptoms associated with the voiding uh, symptoms um, i will ask about any associated uh, pain with that um, ask about any red flag symptoms uh, like um, hematuria recurrent urinary tract infection uh, any palpable masses uh, also i will ask about any associated incontinence with a stress or urge uh, incontinence also um, i will um, ask about her uh, any previous serological procedure especially any surgery Uh, done before for um, prolapse or for uh, urinary incontinence um, also uh, i will assess her uh, in the past surgical history i will exclude any history of radiotherapy or chemotherapy previously i will ask about her uh, obstetric uh, history regarding a uh, number of pregnancy uh, childbirth use of any instrument i will ask about her previous medical um, history and the use of any medication especially if there is any um, neurological uh, disease Uh, I'll ask about the social history, including smoking and the use of any uh, illicit medication, and the effect of her symptom in her um, daily life and sexual um, life. Uh, and then I will proceed to uh, examination of the patient in the presence of chaperone with the patient consent, uh, looking for any um, obvious neurological um, um, any sign of neurological disease. and then i will examine the patient looking for any palpable bladder or bladder tenderness uh, examination of the uh, perineum in um, supine and lateral position looking for the shape of the urethral meatus if there is any obvious abnormality in the urethra like urethral carinkel or urethral diverticulum if there is any degree of uh, prolapse uh, uh, the degree of esterilization of the um, uh, perineum and the genitalia Uh, and also I'll ask the patient to uh, strain and cough to see if there is any uh, leak of urine and I'll complete my examination by uh, a speculum examination. Okay, what type of speculum you will use? Um, I will use the Simpson speculum. Okay. Her history is quite straightforward. She has no past medical or surgical illness. She has three children, all born by normal vaginal delivery. She is postmenopausal for the past two years. She has no major concerns with uh, sexual health. Not a smoker, and uh, no significant medical history in the past. Examination wise, she is obese. Her BMI is thirty six. Otherwise, examination findings were normal. genital examination on inspection you are able to see a bulge in the urethral meatus in the anterior vaginal wall otherwise no urine leak sim speculum examination uneventful how are you going to proceed so in this lady um when i see a swelling in the anterior vaginal wall then uh, the suspicion is uh, possibly urethral diverticulum Um, however, I would expect uh, urethral diverticulum to give her some symptom in the form of uh, dysuria, tripling, uh, and dyspareunia. Um, so um, the patient is is not is asymptomatic. No, she presented with uh, blocking sensation while passing urine. Okay. Okay, that's fine. So my my suspicion from the examination is the presence of uh, urethral diverticulum. Um, I will confirm my um, suspicion by doing an MRI scan of the pelvis, uh, which will uh, confirm the diagnosis. Okay, I will share the MRI scan. So this is the MRI scan. We are seeing the axial T two. I'll take you. Are you able to see it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I will take it from bottom to top. You can stop me if you want any time. Thank you. 
and this is the sagittal pictures any findings yeah so i i, I can see from the mri uh, that there is a suspicion of urethral diverticulum uh, more toward the um, left side um, of the urethra. Okay. So in this case, uh, I will uh, discuss with the patient uh, the need uh, for treatment uh, to improve her symptoms. Um, uh, I will explain that the treatment will be surgical by excision of the um, uh, cyst. I will explain to the patient the procedure of ter in terms of technical aspect and possible complication. Uh, as the alternative, I will uh, support my consent with the pause uh, leaflet. Um, I will explain to the patient about the possible uh, complication um, and including uh, um, uh, urinary incontinence in about 10 to 20 percent of the patient, uh, uh, recurrence of the cyst in about uh, 10 percent, and uh, very low possibility of uh, fistula formation after uh, the cyst excision. I will explain that she will need to have a catheter for uh, a few days uh, after the procedure, and the procedure will be done under general anesthesia on day case basis. Okay. Um, how will you reconstruct the urethra again? Uh, usually, uh, if the cyst size is not that big, uh, direct closure of the urethra is uh, possible. Uh, if it is uh, difficult, then I will use the uh, the Martius uh, labial uh, fat pad flap uh, in order to augment my repair. Okay. What is Martius flap? What is the blood supply? So Martius uh, flap, it is, it is a, a fat pad flap uh, taken from the uh, labia. It is based on a branch from the internal pudental uh, artery. So we do an elliptical incision um, on the labia release the fat pad and then we um, um, insert uh, or interposition the fat pad in between the urethra and the anterior vaginal wall to augment the repair. Okay, so how will you explain this surgery to her? So I'll explain to the patient that uh, she will be uh, put to sleep um, and then we'll open the legs. Uh, we will insert a urethral catheter and then an incision in the anterior vaginal wall will be done. Uh, the uh, urethral diverticulum will be excised completely and then the urethra will be closed by uh, absorbable stitches uh, and then a, another catheter will be um, inserted left in for about four days and then she will come back we'll take the catheter out she will notice a little bit of uh, pain after the procedure blood in the urine for a while which is universal for most of the patient um, the specific complication is uh, a low possibility of recurrence, low possibility of fistula formation, and there is a possibility of urinary incontinence in about 10 to 20 percent. Okay, what is the long term follow up for these patients? Uh, for this patient, I will send the, uh, the diverticulum for histology all the time to exclude a very low possibility of uh, malignant changes. Um, I will see the patient in the clinic after three months. Uh, uh, to assess if there is any pain, uh, discharge, uh, difficulty during um, sexual intercourse. I uh, will examine her urine, uh, assess her uh, fluorate and post void uh, residue uh, to make sure that everything is fine. Good. And um, what kind of cancer possible? Um, I think it's, it's possible to have adenocarcinoma and the uterine diverticulum. Okay, we'll stop that. Um, you did really well the second scenario. I have uh, nothing much to add. So urethral diverticulum is a scenario that mainly you should be very confident in the surgical steps and uh, Marsh's flap reconstruction. They won't expect too much but identifying uh, is important. Usually the MRI scans or any investigation shown in the exams were quite straightforward. Sometimes they can say a picture of the perineum showing the uh, diverticulum creating a bulge and um, those are all the possibilities quite straightforward scenario uh, you have any questions on this um, no thank you